Hello and welcome to another episode of Power on Devices. Uh, we have all been talking quite a lot about ChatGPT, and it's been at the you know back of our heads. Conversational AI will it take away our jobs? Will it change what we do? Will it change how we do it? To talk about this topic and what's going to happen next in the world of artificial intelligence uh, is Kevin Baraguna, who is the founder of Deep AI, um, and Kevin is joining us from the West Coast. Uh, Kevin. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on, Nandu. I'm ha- very happy to be here. So, Kevin, in our own devices, we usually uh, talk about you know new knowledge in in the space of technology. Uh, so, before we get into what AI is doing and what it's going to do, uh, could you explain what does deep AI uh, do in this space and how is it different from everybody out there? So we're a leading company in the generative AI space, and we're attacking, or rather we're providing services globally, and we take a more open access approach than many companies. For example, all of our products are free to use, or at least have a free tier, and you can use them anonymously without signing up or without payment. So business model wise, it's closer to a Google than an Apple. Okay. So that's how we view ourselves. It's an interesting point because there's one question I've I've always wanted to ask people in this space. Is it really possible to do artificial intelligence in a free model? Because I'm hearing the kind of prohibitive costs that go into running the servers, you know, which have to do this kind of computing. So how does this model actually work? Is, is Is it actually feasible? We believe it is. We seem to be making it work right now. Um, All the numbers line up. So I'm pretty happy with the results so far. The team is happy with how we've been able to deliver generative AI experiences, whether image or text, for free to our users and still remain profitable. So I see no reason why it's not. I think initially, many players of the industry were concerned it would not be possible. But six months later, it's already shown to be not, not as bad as initially feared. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. It's actually good for the consumer that you don't have to pay for everything. 100%. Now, Absolutely. Uh, if, if we look at the future, uh, and uh, you know, a lot of people think the chat GPT is something that's just you know, hit us on the face. But this has actually been a very slow process getting to where you know, chat GPT-3 and chat, uh, and chat GPT-4 are right now, right? Like it's just improved and improved and it's come to a point where we think it's maybe, you know, hit a sweet spot with what it can do. Um, and like, I personally have been seeing AI bots for you know almost a decade. Like you know, if you look at the very rudimentary versions we had maybe uh, almost a decade back. So, uh, is this now going to change dramatically because you have hit the sweet spot and maybe a lot of things are happening at the same time? And given the kind of technology this is, it gets, you know, it keeps getting better. Is it going to get better faster now? Well, it's, of course, really hard to predict the future with certainty, but what we're seeing now is the result of exponential investment and decreases in hardware cost, particularly servers and GPUs from NVIDIA. Now, given that the investment has maybe 10 x in one year, my best guess is we're only getting started and we've seen maybe 1%, 1% of what is going to get done over the next decade. That's my best guess. It's only getting started. And that one percent has blown up uh, our mind. So so yes. what do you think or what are you seeing right now as the immediate possibilities of what's coming next? I think within a year or two, we will get 
computers that you can talk to in a lifelike manner, and they will understand every word you say and be able to do anything you can do on a computer. It's kind of like Star Trek or Star Wars. That technology is right around the corner. It's okay. a very exciting time. Within 10 years, the computers will almost certainly be far smarter than any human. And in the kind of space that you are in right now, you know, how is it improving uh, almost on a daily basis? Like, uh, you know, you do a lot of stuff with image generation, for instance. You know, yes. is it because, you know, because so many people are using it and you are seeing so many new permutation combinations of what people want to do. You know, how is that improvement happening? And every day, like, you know, you just need to go to Twitter to see how people are playing around with, you know, everything AI. Uh, so how is that improving in a stuff on the ground? Well, there's a global AI movement and, you know, there's investment from all over the world and there's researchers and engineers all over the world. Many of them are here in California. Many of them are in China or India or other places. It, it takes, it's a global effort to create AI. So it's not, it's not just a small group. It, it takes a huge te a global team that is creating this technology daily. So the reason we're seeing the reason we're seeing such rapid progress is because of the number of people working on it right now, as well as the amount of investment it's receiving all over the world. And in terms of technology, what excites you most right now? Like you know, of, of, of what you are working on or what you are able to do right now, and getting your hands dirty, what is exciting you most? Oh, it's almost hard to bring just one small answer. No, I don't need small answers. I have time. I think, <laughs> I think what we're seeing become capable with text processing, similar to GPT-4, is probably the most exciting because this is the first time I've seen computers able to think in a manner similar to humans. It's kind of the holy grail of AI. So that would probably be the most exciting. You know, uh, is emotion going to follow the thinking? You know, because this is at least in the space that I'm in, in media, that is what, you know, you know yeah. we think is ultimately going to differentiate humans is that we will be able to put some emotion into the writing and everything else is now, you know, you know can be done by AI. I see no reason why the computers can't be just as emotional as us. I see no reason why not. And as of now, what do you think are the biggest challenges in this space? The biggest challenge is probably deploying the technology safely and ethically, because we've rapidly over the last year reached a point where we can do almost anything we want if we want it enough. The question is, is this the right problem to be solving? Is this good for humanity? The question is not always yes. Yeah. So I think we need to be careful about where we're using AI more now than ever. I've been using um, you know, the Bing chat uh, yes. um, option for a few weeks now and because I had early yes. access. And I've seen like from day one to now, you know, it's it's almost been throttled, you know, in a, in a sense that, you know, it, it's as if Microsoft doesn't want it to be let loose, you know, like the options, yes. like the kind of debt it had in its answers initially, you know, it's been throttled. So is this all because now we are learning that maybe we really don't want an AI to go to do, uh, you know, to be at a hundred percent, you know, it needs to be limited in what it can do. You know, because we really don't know what that 100% could throw up. I think that's part of it. I think part of it is that Microsoft and OpenAI are just trying to be careful with deploying the new technology. Another part of it is when Bing says something stupid, it gets news headlines and it just looks bad. So they have to stop that. No, so, so do you think like these kind of sort of, you know, ring fencing will happen around whatever 
the AI does. Like, you know, um, you know, I was actually playing with deep AI and I saw with a couple of things it said, like, you know, maybe uh, I, I can't remember the exact phrase. Maybe this is something that has a slightly negative um, aspect to it. And, and maybe you want to, you know, relook the suggestion. So, so are you seeing that there's going to be a little bit of, of a self-regulation kind of a thing that's going to happen in this space? Yeah, there is self-regulation. That is the primary main of regulation right now, because to my knowledge, the government globally and in the USA is not effective at regulating AI. Yeah. So so it'll have to it'll have to come from the companies, right? I wish it weren't the case, but for now that's that's absolutely yeah. true. So uh, is that in a sense, you know, you know, making the companies in the space talk to each other and figure out what is it that should be the basic, you know, and the kind of stuff that we should put in place? As far as I know, all of the serious AI companies are calling for government regulation. Okay. The okay. government is asleep. Mm. The government is not listening. It's it's only when uh, it's only when something goes wrong that like they would suddenly want to sort of clamp down and you know and bring in regulation maybe which is too harsh and wasn't needed in the first place, right? I think it will happen fairly soon, but only because AI will start causing real world problems. And the first problem I see is fake images and deep fakes are going to cause issues in elections because people won't know what is real and what is fake anymore. And that is a very big problem. And which is exactly the question I wanted to ask you next, because like just this week we saw the, the fake images of Trump being arrested, right? And, and, and it absolutely, you know, it's very difficult for people to, uh, to figure out out what is fake and what is true you know in fact there was a saying that art is there so that you can make out um, uh, uh, the difference between you know fake and the real world stuff but that differentiation is now going away so so so, uh, so do you think ai whenever it starts um, you know generating content be it text be it images be it video will need to come with a little bit of meta that sort of tells people you know somewhere that this is you know uh, again, will that kind of self-regulation be in place where it comes with maybe a watermark saying whatever you're seeing is computer generated or something like that? Maybe. I don't think it's enough. You can yeah. remove a watermark very easily. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Bad actors. Yeah. Bad actors will not follow these rules. Mm -hmm. The core technology is now open source. So anyone in any country can often use it quite easily. And that applies to any generative technology, whether it's images, faces, or text, or video soon. So it's not enough. It's not enough. And uh, in the things that you're working on, let's let's look at it from a deep AI perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. The segments that you're working on, are there things that, that you are a little bit frustrated with that you're not able to do even now? Or, or you think that's going to take a little bit of time? It's It maybe needs more... Uh, software, you know, more hardware upgradation, you know, are there those frustrations in what you do? I'll say there's some things we haven't yet been able to bring because they're a little bit too expensive for the free users. Yeah. But overall, overall, we're, it, it, it's a very exciting time because almost anything we can imagine, we would be able to deliver. If we really wanted, if we wanted to build a robot from Star Wars, it doesn't seem so hard anymore. Yeah. So thank you, Kevin, for being on the show. Very interesting view into the future of what is possible. Let's hope we have a city-driven Mac coming to all of us, you know, soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks like, for being on the say, show. I'd like to say one final word. Yeah. I've been telling people for years that AI will be the single most important technology of our lifetime. And now I believe it's becoming very clear. 
I think if anything, I was I didn't say it strongly enough. It's going to define our life. Absolutely. AI will define our own life. Absolutely. And, and we're already seeing it, like, you know, the kind of mortal fear that a lot of people have, whether it will take away their Absolutely. jobs, change their lives forever. And, 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 and that is something that you get once in a century, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So right. you were listening to Kevin Baragona of Deep AI joining us from San Francisco. Uh, Kevin, thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Our own devices will be back next week with another guest. We are there everywhere you listen to your podcasts.